It's now time to lawyer up with our friends from Treese and Treese Law Firm. Guys, welcome back, Deborah and Tom. So I always enjoy when you guys come on because the legal system is so complex, but we could take a topic and really drill down and explain what's happening. And today we're talking about alimony, right? And before we got on, we were talking, alimony is such a bad word when people kick around, but really it's about support, fairness, and need. So let's start with Deborah. What's the actual definition of alimony? Well, actually, alimony is just money paid from one spouse to the other in a divorce situation for the purposes of support. And that is so that person can meet their living expenses and maintain a reasonable standard of living. And that um, makes a lot of sense. Now, is it automatic? No, it is not automatic. And it is not a part of equitable distribution, and it is not a payoff. Okay. What it really is is simply the court looking at the financial needs of both parties and how they can meet those needs and the ability of one party to contribute to the needs of the other party. And that's kind of what I was going to ask is who is it then entitled to receive it then? Well, it's that party that is in need and the other party has the ability to contribute to that need so that each party has a reasonable standard of living. For fairness. How would we define the ability to pay then? How is that figured out? Well, that's figured out by their financial income. Okay. Yes, yeah, strictly by the facts. And when you say income, obviously that's what's coming in, but is overhead, is that part of it as well? Like if you look at expenses, really what's left, is that part of the equation? Go ahead, Tom. If sure, you absolutely. That's need. You know, you have ability to pay and ability to meet your own need. You're, if you can't meet your need, you have a shortage. Both parties often have something close to a shortage, but if there's a substantial disparity, the courts will tend to level that out somewhat. Okay, that, so the courts are gonna go in there, they're gonna decide what's fair, and they're really gonna look at everything, because at the end, that's really what they're after, just fairness, right. support. Right, right. they're both. looking at the income of each party. Right. And then let's talk about when you say income, how much? How is that determined? How much is paid out? And then the other part of that is how long? Well, they look at a list of factors that are involved. There's statutory factors such as the age of a party, the health, their education, their career, you know, what's been their earning history, earning capacity, their contributions to the marriage, did their sacrifices for the marriage, mm -hmm. you know, raising children instead of working, going on transfers for the spouse's career and getting a menial job as opposed to developing their own career. They also look at the duration of the marriage. If it's a short-term marriage, logically, you're not going to get as, uh, alimony for as long. What's considered short-term in the eyes Less of the Less than seven years. Okay. We do have some parameters on duration. Less than seven years, it can vary from a few months up to no more than seven years. Over 17 years, they can look at the possibility of permanent alimony if the spouse that's going to receive it does not have the ability to become self-supporting. Now, if they do have the ability to become self-supporting, there's a rehabilitation part of that, right. correct? And that would mean going back to school or things of that nature. So that's something that the courts would look at as well, because maybe there's a young individual that's like, you know what, I need about a five or six years to get an education to start my career. So even things like that are looked at, right? If that's reasonable under the circumstance, if they've been married two years, you don't have to go pay for somebody to go through a four-year degree. Right. But if they have made sacrifices and you have a, a marriage of sufficient duration and they don't have any skills to become self-supporting, that other spouse, if they can afford it, can be required to contribute to the education or training so that that spouse can be self-supporting. That's the sure. whole point. Let's all be self-supporting, which would be the ideal situation. Right. And it all goes back to how we kind of started this. It's support, fairness, and need. Yes. That's right. So basically everybody's just trying to work together just to, just to make a right and to, to move on, if you will. That's right? really the point. That all right. Really well, is. again, we always enjoy your legal expertise when you come on here. Thank you. And if you would like to contact them, you could go to divorceattorneyjacks.com or they can reach their telephone number at 904-737-1771.